Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. This is the first episode of the Slither.io game tutorial series in Scratch. So as you know, Slither.io is a really fun online game and today we're going to be creating it in Scratch. So this is episode one. So let's look at the final product. This is basically what it's kind of going to look like. You can click to start and once you do, you get spawned into the lobby. You are a snake that can move around. You have to eat your food. You can click to go fast just like the regular game and you can catch these floating food as well so in our tutorial series we're going to be making this so the first thing you need to do is create an empty scratch project and so that's what i've done here and let's create our snake sprite so let's delete this cat sprite come here press paint and then we can go to costumes and upload the files that are necessary so let's import snake head and snake clone and I'll leave, a, I'll leave a link to all this in the description below but you can create it if you want as well. Uh, pretty simple. So we have the head and we have the clone. So the first thing we want to do is create a couple of variables. So let's create some variables to keep track of the speed and the player position. So let's call this one player x. Let's create another one called player y. And let's create another one called speed. So when flag is clicked, let's set all of these to their uh, necessary starting values. So player X should go to zero, player Y should go to zero, and speed we can set to maybe, t let's do five. And then let us go to motion. We can go to go to, bring that in, and let's go to position zero, zero, just the center of the screen. The next thing we wanna do is drag in a forever loop. So in that forever loop, let's go to motion and bring in a point towards mouse pointer. So now you can see that the snake continually points at the mouse. Uh, but we do what we want to do is make it so that this uh, direction translates to change in the player X and the player Y. So the way we do that is with some trigonometry. If you don't understand this, do not worry. It's pretty confusing. Uh, you can just copy along and it'll work perfectly. So let's bring in a player X, change player X by. Let's go into operators. Let's bring in a multiplication sign minus, and then this ABS of. Uh, let's go into motion and drag in a direction and bring that in the subtraction, the first spot, or it's actually the second spot. In the first spot, we wanna put 90. And then we wanna put this uh, operator inside of the ABS of. Let's change this to cosine or COS for short. That's what they call it here. And then let's put that before the multiplication sign. Uh, after we're going to put speed so let's drag this in here so once again we take 90 minus the direction we take the cosine of that if you don't know what that means don't worry and then we're going to mul multiply that by our variable speed which is currently set to 5 so you can imagine that if we change this uh, to something higher than 5 let's say 10 the player x will actually move faster let's just duplicate this change this to player y and then let's change this to sine because that's what we need to do as well and as you can see, the player X and player Y move along with the direction they point at, the snake is pointing at. Okay, so then what we need to do is set up the clones because right now we just have this sprite that's moving, but uh, none of the bodies are being created, right? None of the body sprites um, that follow the snake head are being spawned. So as you can assume, we're gonna have to create some clones. So we're gonna go to events, drag in a when flag is clicked, go into forever, and we're going to create two new variables for each clone to have their position, right? Because each clone has a different position. So make sure you hit for the sprite only. That's super, super important. We're going to hit clone X and create that variable and then create another one. Make sure you hit for the sprite only. That's super important and call it clone Y. We're going to set these two variables to uh, the player X and the player Y, just like that. And then we're gonna create a clone of myself. So this will create a clone with those positions. Uh, but we need to actually go to it. So we can say when I start as clone forever, and then go to X, Y, and we need to drag in some operators. Let's bring in the minus operator in both of these. I can move this down. And we are going to have clone X in the first spot for X, clone Y in the first spot for Y, 
and in here you want player x and player y. Now what this is doing is it's translating that clone x and then clone y into a position on our stage. So somewhere up among the x-axis and among the y-axis, somewhere there. So what we're going to do is let's test this out. So as you can see, we have a snake. It has uh, body parts that follow it. If I full screen, you can see that as well. Um, and it looks pretty cool. The only problem is that the clones are spawning in the wrong costume. They're actually spawning in the head costume. So the way to fix that is pretty easy. We just say, when I start as clone, let's switch costume to snake clone. And that's about it. So if we uh, full screen again, and we do this, you can see that they spawn with the correct costume. And that's basically it. Um, it's super easy to make this. Uh, I'll, this is obviously the first part, so we'll fix some bugs in the uh, next episode. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's going to be episode one. And I hope you guys are excited for this tutorial series because I am. And hopefully I will see you soon. Peace out, guys.